call to order the March 10, 2015 meeting of the Oshkosh Common Council. I want to welcome those of you that are here in the Council Chamber tonight to the Council Chamber, to the Council meeting. I also want to welcome those who are watching us on Channel 10, those who might be watching us on their computers, those who might be listening to us on their computers, and those who might be listening to us on the radio. This is your city government. We hope you'll participate in whatever way works for you. So welcome to all. That's Deputy Clerk, take the roll call vote. Take the roll call. Or the vote, the roll call of the council members. Herman? Here. Allison Osby? Here. Pansky? Here. Fitzgerald? Here. Cummings? Here. Peck? Here. Mayor Tower? Here. Present seven. Hey, I'm going to ask all to rise for the invocation, which will be led by <coughs> Council Member Herman, and the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by our students who are up front here. As we gather tonight, we are grateful for the good things that have come to this city. May our decisions always be one that are for the well-being of all whom we govern. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. students. Oh, they've already turned around. They're good. <laughs> Seen others do it, so they're ready for the evening. We do appreciate the fact that we have students from the schools that come down and help us out with the Pledge of Allegiance each week. This week we have four more students with us, and I think we'll find out a little bit about each one of them. I'm going to pass the, the microphone down. I asked them to speak right into the microphone, talk right into it, and tell us what, what your name is, where you go to school, what grade you're in, and and what's your favorite class and why that might be your favorite class? My name is Megan Smith. I go to Smith School and I'm in fifth grade. Wait, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I like science. <laughs> My name is Dominic Johannes and I'm in fifth grade. My favorite subject is art because I love drawing. My name's Hadley, and I go to Jefferson Elementary, and I'm in fourth grade. My favorite subject is reading. I just love to read. My name is Tana, and I go to Jefferson. What grade? Okay, that takes us to public hearings. Uh, the public hearings, I'm going to read them three times. If you'd like to come forward to when I read a public hearing three times, please come forward while I'm reading a particular public hearing three times and make whatever comments you'd like to make. First public hearing is Resolution 15-96, Approval of Final Resolution for Special Assessments, Contract Number 15-04, Paving, Sidewalk, Driveway, Utilities, First Local Street Concrete Paving <coughs> Program, East Side Area, Parkway Avenue, and Mount Vernon Street. Second reading, Resolution 15-96, Approval of Final Resolution for Special Assessments, Contract Number 15-04, Paving, Sidewalk, Driveway, Utilities, First Local Street Concrete Paving Program, East Side Area, Parkway Avenue, and Mount Vernon Street. Third and final reading, Resolution 15-96, Approval of final resolution for special assessments, contract number 15-04, <coughs> paving, sidewalk, driveway, and utilities, first local street concrete paving program, east side area, Parkway Avenue, and Mount Vernon Street. We have someone by the microphone. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Bernard Pitts. 
I live at 617 West Irving in Oshkosh. I'm here tonight to oppose uh, the assessment that is to be put on the property I own at 601 East Parkway. Uh, I feel as though the assessment is not, not right to begin with. And why I say this is, that's on a corner, corner of Monroe and Parkway. It's on the southeast corner. Approximately 13 years ago, the city of Oshkosh paved Monroe and they put in new uh, sewer laterals and storm uh, sewer lateral. And we paid for this street. At the same time, they tore out the sidewalk on Parkway for whatever reason, I don't know, and repaved it. It had only been put in there a couple years prior to that. Now you are coming, or the city is coming, that they want to tear out, could tear out as much as 100 feet of paved pavement on Monroe, south of uh, Parkway and north of Parkway. Uh, this street is a fully improved street. I see no reason to tear it out to begin with. The um, assessment that that we are that is before you now shows that there is a for for Parkway, not for Parkway, for Monroe. They want to charge as much as fourteen hundred and eighty-six dollars to tear that out and to tear out sidewalk, which I don't know why they want to tear out the sidewalk, for another $1,029. Uh, that street was put in with the intent that it was not going to be tore out. There is one thing very strange on the street, which I don't know if any of you had a chance to look at it. There are nine manholes in, the, in that intersection. There are eight storm drains uh, in that intersection. And there are three uh, water shutoffs, the uh, main water shutoffs, in that intersection. Now, why would the city want to tear that out and do it over? Uh, the only piece of concrete that they marked uh, with a green paint that uh, was a piece that's on my property just east of the stoop, uh, which would be 603 Parkway which when the city you know, contractor tore out the sidewalk, they cracked it, and it has remained cracked all these years. Now, there is nothing marked on the sidewalk to be, to repla be replaced on, on uh, <coughs> Parkway, but they show an assessment that there is to be $1,029. Uh, I don't quite get what's going on because I s visited with the city engineer and the assistant city engineer and they told me that what they have to do is because on Mount Vernon they are flooding that they want to run a storm sewer down Parkway to Broad Street and then Broad Street down towards the river. Uh, that doesn't affect Monroe Avenue whatsoever. I, under, I, I agree that Parkway needs to be repaved. When they agreed to, to assess us back uh, approximately 13 years ago, they were going to pave eight feet ahead of the property on Monroe. They paved 0 .03 feet is what they paved, and they did charge me for that 0 .3 feet of, of, of road when they paved it. Uh, I got a, a letter from from, from the engineering department telling me that they wanted to get in the building to see if there was any any uh, sanitary sewer or storm sewer hooked up on Monroe. That already was done 13 years ago. They came in and put dye in the, dye in the sewer and checked it. So I told them there was no need for them to get in and do it again. I then got a letter from the engineering department which I felt was a little intimidating and down outright threatening. I'll read that paragraph to you. It says, property owners who have not returned the construction access agreement would only have partial sidewalk squares removed and patched. 
These property owners will be sent orders to replace the patch sidewalk with permanent concrete sidewalk in 2013. These property owners will be financially responsible for replacing all patch concrete sidewalks, all defective sidewalks, and all sidewalks that does not meet the American with Disability Act ADA standard. Sidewalk scares meeting replacement only to meet ADA standards will not be billed to the property owners if the property owner returns the construction access agreement before commencement of the street reconstruction project. The closed assessment information assumes the construction access agreement was signed and returned by the property owner. Now, I, I feel as though that's a little bit intimidating to send a letter out such as that to, to a property owner telling me, you either let me in the building or you're going to be paying, we're, we're going to make you pay more. Uh, I do not feel as though this assessment on the street is fair, nor do I feel as though the sidewalk assessment is fair because the sidewalk, since I've owned the property, has been 100% replaced on Parkway. And I see no reason to replace it for the third time. So uh, I hope that you will take that in consideration and uh, take that out of the, uh, the um, tonight in your, in your, your voting and uh, I, I wholeheartedly feel as though I should pay for the street, but I don't think I should be paying for what we've already paid for. Thank you. Okay. Raise some questions. We'll raise those during <coughs> the discussion. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else like to come forward on Resolution 15-96 at this point in time? Good evening. Zia Dini from 600 North Main Street, Legend Sports Bar and Grill. I'd just like to uh, go a little bit back 2010 when you guys did the uh, Main Street. I did lost 50% of the business. After reopened, I figured in the meantime, I did refinance my house, pay my bills, and my employees because I didn't feel like to fire and the employees because of the street that's done. I just kept them, thought maybe people will come in and eat, but I guess not. But anyway, after the reopened the, the street, I did uh, give a chance, seven months for the family restaurants I used to own it to bring the business back. Not much, I didn't get any back. So I, I forced myself to remodel the place to stick in big amount, another loan, big huge loan to, to put in there to change the, the concept. And now I see I get uh, a big bill from the city of Oshkosh for the parkway to be done. I understand that needs to be done. It's, it's really bad, you know. But my concern is not to go too far why it doesn't what it should be s make some kind of fund from the council to bring in a city so it can all the not only parkway but all the roads all the streets in Ashkash to be paid by some some fund for example maybe uh, put a tax on uh, each car who's driving it i don't drive in a parkway I do drive on 9th Street and the rest of the street. Yeah, it's true, you know. But it, it, just a consideration, you you have to think about it to bring some kind of fund in a city so people don't have to pay $21,000. You know what was my income last year? It was $24,000. Now, how the hell am I going to pay that kind of money? I don't know. Even with 6%, which Obama gives for 2.9, and here you guys charge 6%. I don't get that. But anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else like to come forward on Resolution 15-96? Seeing no one come forward, I'm going to bring it back to the Council on a motion a second on Resolution 15-96. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. 
Discussion. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Goldie, could you um, please come to the lectern? <clears throat> and uh, Mr. Pitts indicated that you know there was point three feet or something like that on paved on Monroe or whatever. Could you just kind of give us the background on the assessment for the 601 Parkway? Certainly. Flip to that page here briefly. <coughs> One Monroe Street was paved. The intersection of Parkway and Monroe was completed in concrete at that time as Parkway was not scheduled for reconstruction. At that time when they poured the radii and tied back into Parkway, the concrete pavement extended that 0.3 feet. I, I don't have a record of that in front of me to, to challenge, to disagree with Mr. Pitts. I'll take him for his word that that's what it was. Um, but then that distance would have been billed at the per foot cost of the paving at the time the Monroe was done. Since that was roughly 14 years ago, um, he will receive um, the remaining credit, basically 11 years of credit back for that 0.3 feet of paving that was was done on there and we are repaving the inner through Parkway with this. Parkway is the through street. We want to make sure Parkway has the better ride. It doesn't have the stop condition that Monroe does. We need to run larger storm sewer through the intersection um, down to the east to get it out to uh, Parkway. The water flows from west to east. Uh, Parkway was reconstructed the east with a larger storm sewer a few years back. And then there are inlets uh, out there, manholes. All of that needed to be done to tie back in to make sure it drained at the time. Um, when we go through and change the grades slightly, we need to adjust everything to make sure we're putting things back in to meet the current American with Disability Acts for sidewalk, handicap ramps, all that. That requires us to, to adjust those grades. We want to put inlets back in so we don't leave bird baths in the intersection. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Goody, could you also explain, I, I know Mr. Pitts referred to as intimidating, I didn't quite find it as intimidating, but, but it, the standard letter that's sent out to property owners talks about the, uh, the, the I don't know if that's the televising that, that takes place, but the, 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 the essentially the property owner allowing some <coughs> consent for the city to view the, the status, uh, the, the quality of, of the, uh, the water the, the water main and the wastewater main coming? We're, what we're inspecting is the, the sanitary sewer system <coughs> and laterals and then the storm sewer system and laterals if there are storm laterals at the time. Um, we were not seeking access into the property mm -hmm. automatically simply to be able to televise onto the property and get a construction permit to go onto the property to do the construction. Um, the laterals as they go back through the onto the property we want to try to confirm which ones are alive and dead without having to get into the homes to do dying that Mr. Pitts referred to that was done on Monroe Street. If we can confirm through the video televising which laterals are dead or which laterals are live, we know up front we can plan for it better. The contractor can do the work more efficiently. If we have to go into the home and try to die and find every last floor drain, sink, toilet, and run die down those to make sure there's not a second lateral that goes out of the building somewhere that the homeowner very well may not even know exists because it's been there for 120 years. Mm -hmm. But we do on occasion run into that situation too frequently where we've missed those laterals because we were assumed they were dead, but they tied to one floor drain that was in the back corner of the building that we didn't see because it was buried under a shelf. And lo and behold, all of a sudden it backs up six months after the concrete pavement's down and now we have to tear it up mm -hmm. to try to reconnect it. So we're looking to try mm -hmm. to eliminate that need with this closed circuit televising a lot of If the property owners won't give us permission, we're stopping at the property line, I'd trying to identify what laterals are there so we can identify on the plans whether they're going to need additional investigation or potentially we'll have to hook up a lateral if we cannot determine it's live or dead, hook it back up and bill the property owner for an additional lateral that they may or may not be using. Um, and and if, there is, if there is a need then to, if, if televising won't provide you all the data you need and there's a need to access the interior of the, the property owner's uh, home, what, what's the process then that the, your department uses for notification and seeking permission? The, the process to get in the home is typically, if it's an owner-occupied one, the, the, we're going to knock on the door with the contractor, <coughs> try to explain what's going on and ask if 
if they don't want to let us in, even if they can go flush the dye packet down the toilet, we can at least figure out which one is the primary live lateral for a couple of them. If we can get in and, and look around, we're more confident into which lateral is or isn't live, we can make a better determination, look for <coughs> some of those hidden floor drains, some of those type of things. So if we get in there, we'll try to find what we can find to make sure we're only hooking up the laterals that need to be hooked up. <coughs> if we can't get in, we're in a balancing act of trying to make a assumption of us to which one is live, which one is dead, and hoping we guess correctly at that mm -hmm. point in time. Okay, thank you. Could you also, sorry, the sun's right in my face. Uh, could you also address the sidewalk concerns that Mr. Pitts had regarding um, the frontage or the parkway? Yes. Uh, the assessment sheets show, um, as the letter stated, there, there are six additional squares included for laterals that um, on the street, in case we did find that there were additional sanitary sewer laterals or anything, we have the six squares that we add in as a high esti estimate to make sure that we're covered on that sidewalk cost in case we have to remove them to replace a sanitary lateral, water lateral, or storm sewer lateral. <coughs> we didn't. The televising wasn't completed prior to the letting on this. Mr. Pitts did not sign the construction access agreement either to allow us to go on there. So we've left those in there as a high estimate. There are two squares that are shown as needing rehab on the plans. They have basically offset from the adjacent sidewalk squares and pose a trip hazard. So those are the two squares that will definitely be assessed to the property. If we do find our <coughs> laterals at the property that need to be replaced, he'd be assessed for the sidewalk squares related to that lateral work. The remaining sidewalk squares are project sidewalk squares that are coming out to put the sidewalk back in at the correct grade for the American Disabilities Act. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> now, will he be charged for the American Disabilities Act, which has been passed more recently or not? That, I understood that would not happen. If, <coughs> if we can get Mr. Pitts's property is a little bit unique because some of the property has concrete immediately abutting all the way back through the property. We would be able to run a saw down the property line, match into a good portion of that, and do it with the project regardless of whether he signs the construction access agreement. However, there are areas that back up to turf. In those areas, we would need to be encroaching on the private property to put a form in in order to replace those squares. Since we don't have the construction access agreement, we're not going to be able to go back and put that form on the private property to form the concrete. So Mr. Pitts would be sent orders the following year to correct those. And he would pay for those then. Yeah. So hopefully, if you can sign the agreement, it all works out a lot better, both for him in terms of protecting the property against future issues. Is that what I, that I think is that's the, what I hear you that say? That is the hope. That's, You'll have more information and better information to make better decisions to avoid a problem that comes next year or the year after. That, that is the intent. Is we want to get as much information as we can, and we want to put it back the best we can. Um, if we, but if we can't get onto the property, that limits our ability. I'm trying to avoid the issue we had last year on Bowen Street with the resident complaining okay. about trespassing. And the 100 feet on and row, <coughs> I know, uh, was talked about before about the 0.3 feet, but there's also up to 100 feet on the row back and end of that too. The initial, which was partially hit, but I just want to sure we specifically talk about that. The initial resolution does state going back 100 feet. Uh, we do that on all the side streets because occasionally we'll find a secondary lateral. Monroe is a little bit unique. Uh, well, it was redone, so the laterals are there. I could have pulled that one back. We just kept them all uniform at 100 feet on the side streets. If you look at the details on the assessment sheet. I believe Mr. Pitts is only, we're estimating a total of 40 feet, so he's being billed for 20. The plans only call for, at this point in time, going back about 27 feet, um, so he'd be billed for half of that if we need to. And again, that's coming out simply so we can tie the intersection back in, get the inlets in the correct location, get the ADA ramps in correctly. <coughs> and be given a credit on that. And he will be given the remainder of the 25-year credit. Other questions? Um, just for clarification purposes, when we have a street that is fairly new, and this one obviously is only 11 years old, and we come through, um, you know, Monroe runs uh, north-south and, and Parkway runs east-west, the intersections, those are picked up. There is no cost to the homeowner when we hit those intersections, right? Other than what we go around the corner of the intersection. but. 
if you're just drawing a line down the street, that intersection where we might have to put in a big culvert or other pipes, that's picked up by the city of Oshkosh, right, in our cost? That is correct. Okay. Now, going back, and then the gentleman's not here anymore, but the owner of uh, Legends, how does that work when we get on to a business? Now, he, he talked his main business um, entrance is on Monroe, or excuse me, on Main Street, but his building uh, borders Parkway. How does that work as far as cost? Does he get a break for that where he was recently assessed for Main Street, and now we're doing Parkway on his property? The, the assessment policy for the city has a corner lot forgiveness of up to 50% up to 50% reduction in the frontage up to a maximum of 175 foot lot. In that case, I, I don't have his exact dimension in front of me, but he, yeah, essentially has two corners because he fronts Main and Parkway, he fronts Jefferson and Parkway. They're both 120. Okay. Okay, so they both get he gets a reduction off both corners then for that as a okay any other piece he mentioned I know we talked about that when we had our workshop with um, street assessments he supports a wheel tax which I know the city of Appleton has done to take assessments away and um, councils had some discussion on that and we have decided to stay with what we're doing which is assessing a property owner so okay thank you so I other questions or comments Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on resolution 15-96. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, that takes us to resolution 15-97, approval of final resolution for special assessments, contract number 15-05, paving, sidewalk, driveway, utilities, Second Local Street Concrete Paving Program, North Side Area, New York Avenue, and Custer Avenue. Second reading, Resolution 15-97, Approval of Final Resolution for Special Assessments, Contract Number 15-05, Paving, Sidewalk, Driveway, Utilities, Second Local Street Contract Paving Program, North Side Area, New York Avenue, and Custer Avenue. Third and final reading, if you'd like to speak to this, please come up to the microphone at this point. Resolution 15-97, approval of final resolution for special assessments, contract number 15-05, paving, sidewalk, driveway, and utilities, second local street concrete paving program, north side area, New York Avenue, and Custer Avenue. Anybody like to come forward at this point, speak to that? Seeing no one coming forward, uh, I will bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. We moved and seconded. <coughs> Discussion? Questions? I see none. I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on resolution 15-97. Herman? Aye. Alice Nosby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, that takes us to citizen <coughs> statements to council. This is when citizens have an opportunity to come up the microphone and maybe indicate to us something that they think is going rather well in the city, something they're proud of, or a particular concern that they have in the city. Uh, a few rules with respect to this. If you come up to the microphone, please give us your name and address. Limit your comments to no more than five <coughs> minutes. Speak directly to the council. Uh, no electioneering, and this is not the time to talk about other things on the tonight's agenda. Anybody like to come forward at this point in time? I see no one coming forward. That takes us to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is made up of a number of items that are viewed to be non-controversial by the administrative folks. Um, and what we're going to do with respect to this is uh, uh, I'm going to read through it. Uh, while I read through that particular consent agenda, if you'd like to come up and comment on a particular item, when I read that item, please come up to the microphone and make your comments regarding <coughs> that particular item. Once I've gone through all the items uh, and people have had an opportunity to make their comments, uh, then I'll bring it back to the council for some discussion. Then we'll we'll take a uh, ask for a motion, a second, and then talk about it for possible <coughs> approval as a whole package. At any point in time, either a citizen or a council member may request uh, the removal of any particular item from the consent agenda for separate consideration. On that request, I'll remove that item for separate con consideration after completion of the consent agenda. So I'll start to read through. Approval of bills presented by the finance director. Receipt and filing of common council minutes from February 24, 2015. 
approval of cash report from December 2014. Receipt of claim filed with the city's insurance company, Susan Barlow, for alleged damages to her garbage cart from a hit and run. Dennis Bleckel for alleged damages from a sewer backup. Antonio Rivera for alleged damages to his vehicle from a city plow truck. Resolution 15-98, award bid for track backhoe, excavator for streets division to Brooks Tractor, Inc. Resolution 15-99, award bid for elevator maintenance for general services division to MEI Badger Elevator. Resolution 15-100, award bid for double drum vibratory roller for street division to Miller Bradford and Riceburg or Reesburg, Inc. Resolution 15-101, award bid for HVAC improvements for transportation maintenance facility to Gartman Mechanical Services. Resolution 15-102, approved purchase for 2015 water meters and transmitters for the water utility division to HD Supply Water Works for 2014. Resolution 15-103, approval of change order number one for public works contract number 14-06 with Jim Fisher, Inc. for concrete sidewalk. Resolution 15-104, approval of amendment to professional service agreement with Strand Associates for engineering design services, aviation business park. Resolution 15-105, approve interagency agreement with various Winnebago County law enforcement and fire paramedic agencies for child abduction response team. Resolution 15-106, cancel outstanding checks, write off delinquent and uncollectible accounts. Resolution 15-107, disallowance of claim by Travis Wolt. Resolution 15-108, approval of combination Class A licenses, Special <coughs> Class B licenses, operator licenses, and taxi cab driver licenses. Anybody like to come forward? In case you missed it when I was reading. See no one come forward. I'll bring it back to the council for any questions they may have, any upfront discussion, and any requests to remove an item from the consent agenda. Mr. Cummings. Thank you, Mayor Tower. Uh, just two uh, basically questions. First is Resolution 15105. Uh, Mark, can you elaborate on what that all entails? Or Chief Grawls here. Chief Grawls. I didn't see you back there. It has to do with an interagency agreement. Yeah, this is agreement with uh, basically all the law enforcement agencies in the county, fire, EMS, and a lot of other agencies, probation, parole, schools. It's a collaborative team effort that should we have a child abduction incident, that we've all agreed to allocate resources to it and uh, commit to the training and basically operate under, under incident command to investigate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the chief up there? You had a, a, qu a question on resolution 15106. I think so. So the taxpayers know. Uh, either Mark or Trina, can you come up and talk about the the, the process for canceling outstanding checks and write off of delinquent accounts? Yeah, I think Ms. Larson can do that. <clears throat> I understand from last year this is more of a bookkeeping procedure than anything else yeah very much so so these would be our accounts payable checks that have not been cashed and they've been outstanding for more than two years we have followed up with these vendors and uh, specifically questioned and done our due diligence as well with our outstanding payroll checks we also have accounts receivable. Those are items that we have attempted to collect and will continue to collect. But at this point for the booking entry, we will write them off, but continue to pursue collections. Thank you. But a lot of these have already gone through bankruptcy, so yes. our chances of getting anything are not very great. Yes. Any other questions or comments or removal and be removed from the oh, consent agenda? That's it for me. I'll ask for a motion for approval of the <coughs> consent agenda uh, as provided to the council. So moved. Second. Be moved and seconded. Another opportunity for questions or discussion on any item on the consent agenda. <coughs> Seeing none, I'll ask the uh, 
the clerk take the roll call vote. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, there were no items removed from the consent agenda, so that'll take us to pending ordinances. As I read an ordinance, if you'd like to uh, comment on that particular ordinance, the microphone is open, so I'd ask you to come up to the microphone and make your comments. First one is Ordinance 15-109, Amend Section 23-3, Recycling Required to Update Types of Plastic Containers Accepted for Recycling. See no one coming forward. Bring it back to Council for a motion and a second on Ordinance 15-109. So moved. Second. second. Moved and second. Questions? Discussion? Seeing us, I step the clerk, take the roll call vote on Ordinance 15-109. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Ordinance 15 110, approval of changes for displaying annual parking permits. Might I like to come forward to speak to that? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Questions? Discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask for the roll call vote on Ordinance 15 110. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. <coughs> Ordinance 15 111, approval of parking regulation changes on Wheatfield Way, Kentucky Street, and Florida Avenue. <coughs> See no one coming forward. So bring it back to Council for a motion and a second on Ordinance 15 111. So moved. Second. Question? Discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask for the roll call vote on Ordinance 15-111. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, it takes us to new ordinances, which ordinarily require two readings. Uh, this will be the first <coughs> reading tonight, unless the council waives the rules, and on the first one there will be such a request made, I do believe. So if you'd like to comment, uh, you can comment uh, at this time. I suspect we will waive the rules, so if you want to comment on the first one, please make sure to come up at this point in time. Ordinance 15-112, amend ordinance relating to procedures to fill council vacancies. Staff recommends waiving the rules and adopting the first reading. Quick word of explanation, because this you'll hear more about. It has to do with the fact that uh, we anticipate because there will be a council vacancy as a result of the mayor oral race. The two candidates running for uh, uh, the position of mayor are both on the council at the current time. So one of the two will be elected, so there will be a vacancy to be filled. Uh, at a former time, uh, Mr. Palmieri was here at that particular time, we, we did come up with a process uh, which said at the time of a vacancy, we'll initiate the process. Uh, we're looking at, at making a change to at the time of the vacancy or when there's a, no a vacancy is known or in clearly anticipated such as this case this is an unusual case we can start the process process takes uh, process can take uh, five to seven weeks or could take more than that if we are able to do this we could start the process early and conceivably put the, the new council in a position of having a, a seventh member at least the first or second meeting and still <coughs> provide people with plenty of opportunity to, to apply for that position okay so anybody like to comment on that come forward if not um, I will I will bring it back to the council for a motion to waive the rules um, I would move to waive the rules and enact this on the first reading second, second. second. it's been moved and seconded anybody like to comment on that from people here in the council in the uh, in the council chambers Seeing none, I'll bring it back to council. <coughs> Any comments on this or questions? Uh, discussions? Mr. Mayor, on motion the to waive the, the rules? Uh, yeah, the okay. only concern that I had was um, the, the one paragraph in there, if we could maybe separate from the 14 days regarding the clerk to what the applicant has in the 30 days. It just seems like that the time frame was a little, if we could just maybe make it a separate paragraph. Maybe it's not, it just seemed a little confusing to me reading that with the, the first it says, uh, the I'm city clerk shall within again. 14 days of a vacancy or anticipate a vacancy advertise. And then it goes on two sentences later to say within 30 days, the applicants must submit applications. I'm wondering if we could separate that. It says within, it, yeah. it, 
I can Fourth. split it into two paragraphs okay. if you want. It's not I just a think big that deal. the timing would be more two. clear regarding what your response. We're on the waiving the rules first. We need to have the right. Okay, let's waive the rules first. Uh, it was second, but we need to vote, to vote on, on whether we're going to talk about it tonight. Oh, then we can come back to the actual substance. Good point. <clears throat> Any comments on waiving the rules to vote on this tonight? See, now I'll ask clerk to take the roll call vote on the motion to waive the rules. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, that's we'll, we'll take it up tonight, so I'm going to come okay. back to you, Ms. Pansky. Well, I got Great. it. <laughs> Are we okay? Yes. Are you, are you yes. okay? I just think that would be a little bit. Okay. Other questions or comments? More streamlined. I think this will be helpful to the council, new mayor, in terms of getting getting things started, having seven members as soon as possible, having the uh, uh, appointments to committees as soon as possible. So everybody's in good shape and we're ready to get, get rolling right away. Or you folks will be ready to get rolling right away. Okay, I'll ask, uh, clerk, uh, I'll ask the clerk take the roll call vote on ordinance 15-112. Do we, do we need a motion? I'll make a motion, need a motion. Make a motion to, to approve ask, the ordinance. Right, need the motion. Do we waive the rules? Need the motion? It's been moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and second at discussion. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? I see none. Now I'll ask the clerk. <coughs> Herman? Aye. Allison <coughs> Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? All right. Carried seven. Help is always appreciated. <laughs> okay, ordinance 15 113 approved request to attach to city from town of Nakaimai, Plainview voluntary attachment. This is the first reading for this particular ordinance, so people can comment on it tonight or they can comment on it at the next council meeting when it will be taken up for consideration by the council. See no one coming forward, so we'll, we'll move forward. <coughs> then we'll. Then we'll move to Ordinance 15-114, approve request to annex to city from Town of Oshkosh, Stormwater Utility Annexation Number 1, fronting on Jackson Street and North Main Street, north of Vacant Street. Anybody like to come forward to speak to that? Once again, this is the first reading, so there's an opportunity to speak to it now or at the next council meeting when the council will consider it for a vote. Third and five, uh, fourth, actually, the Fourth uh, new ordinance, ordinance 15-115, approve request to annex to the city from town of Oshkosh, stormwater utility annexation number two, fronting on North Main Street. Would I like to come forward to speak to that? Okay, once again, there will be the opportunity the next time. That moves us to new resolutions. <coughs> and the first new resolution is resolution 15-116, and it has been withdrawn for consideration tonight. It will probably come up at a later time when it can be more completely put together, give more people time to think about it. So it's been withdrawn. Resolution 15-117, approved plan development to construct a new building east of 1075 North Washburn Street. Anybody I'd like to come up and speak to that. Seeing no one coming up, I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second on resolution 15 117. So moved. Second. Questions? Discussion? Seeing none, ask the clerk, Deputy Clerk, take the roll call vote on resolution 15 117. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. A resolution 15-118, support restoration of complete streets law, restore funding for transportation alternatives program, and uh, Knowles Nelson stewardship fund proposed to be eliminated or drastically cut in SB 21. And I'd like to come forward to speak to that. Bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. So moved. <coughs> second. Been moved and seconded. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on resolution 15 118. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. The next one is resolution. I'm going to ask a quick question here on, on process here because we're thinking about substituting something, should we substitute this one or read the resolution, get it on the floor, and then talk about any changes we'd want to make? No, just 
sheets talking about the ones that you've already done. You should have received a revised resolution in your packet, right, so, so we would just work We could just take the revised resolution the revised up amendment. as it is without going to the first one and then substituting? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to make, want to make sure okay. we're on the right path, so don't need to get corrected later. Okay, we do have a revised resolution. Originally, <coughs> Resolution 15-119 said support public authority status for UW system schools and oppose budget cuts to UW system. Uh, that has been changed. The title has been changed to support increased flexibilities for UW system schools and oppose budget cuts to UW system. The Really, the only change in the resolution itself occurs on the second page and basically takes out mention of a public authority and support for a public authority and talks about supporting basic principles proposed, supporting the basic principle proposed by Governor Walker and the University of Wisconsin Board of Regents to increase institutional flexibility for UW system schools. So it supports the flexibility option without mentioning public authority. Reason for that change is because a number of things that have happened over the past few weeks regarding just what public authority means. So. Okay, so I'll ask anybody like to come forward to speak to that. Please come forward and speak to it. Tony Palmieri, 212 West Parkway uh, Avenue. I want to thank the council for coming forward with this resolution. Uh, I've been at UW Oshkosh for 26 <laughs> years, and as Mayor Tower knows, we've had some rough budgets in that time, but I really can't recall the last time local governments were being called on to pass these kinds of resolutions. Oshkosh uh, would not be the first if you pass this uh, tonight. And I think it, it's in recognition of the severity of these cuts. I mean, we've never quite seen anything like it. And, and uh, cities that host campuses realize that the campuses are quite an economic engine in the community. And so if they can show some support for the system, it might have some impact on what's going on down in Madison. I do want to say, however, though, that I, I appreciate that the, the mention of public authority was removed because it is very vague. No one really knows what that means yet. But I would urge you to even take out the support increased flexibilities language because that, that too is, is vague. It's not been clear yet what increased flexibilities would mean. I mean, does it mean in 2017 there would be the flexibility to raise tuition as high as we'd want? Does it mean the flexibility to suspend some of the shared governance principles of the UW? We're not clear yet, and I, you know, I would urge the council, if you really want to support increased flexibilities, to at least wait until there's a couple of forums uh, locally on that. I know there's a faculty uh, group that's going to have a forum on this topic, public authority slash increased flexibilities, in the near future. So if you really feel the need to have that in there, I would say maybe lay it over at least until you can get some more information about what increased flexibility might mean. I also think you really don't need that language in this resolution. I mean, just to give you two examples, Whitewater uh, passed a resolution similar to the one that you have in front of you for Oshkosh. And they simply said, the city of Whitewater Common Council encourages our governor, senators, and representatives to ensure that the UW Whitewater has adequate funding to fulfill its educational mission and to support the vitality of our community. Nothing about increased flexibilities. The Stevens Point resolution that I think is most similar to the one that you have in, in front of you, they too, uh, be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Stevens Point opposes proposed cuts to the UW and requests the legislature fund the UW system as recommended by the Board of Regents. Nothing about increased flexibility or public authority. So. For all I know, increased flexibility may be a great thing. We just don't know yet. It's been a nice sounding phrase. I mean, it sounds like clean air. Everyone you know, would be for it. But what policy does it really um, support? So I uh, appreciate the council coming forward uh, with this. I would simply urge that you either remove the increased flexibility language, because I don't think you really need it. And I don't, I don't hear many people on the campus really saying put that in at this point, or I would say just wait until at least we have a forum or two so we can learn more about what increased flexibility might mean from the system perspective and from the governor's perspective. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Anybody else like to speak to this? Council taking up the resolution. <coughs> 
Seeing no one else come forward, I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second on revised uh, resolution 15 119. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions? Discussion? Yeah. Um, <coughs> yes, Mr. It's, it's more comment than, than questions. Real, realistically, in the uh, resolution, um, that support increased flexibility is really the purpose. So everything that's in the body of <coughs> the um, resolution basically uh, is what Mr. Palmyra was talking about, the concerns of, of, of you know, what the budget cuts could do to UW Oshkosh and how it has an impact in the Oshkosh community and area. So I'm just wondering, without tabling the resolution, that we just come up with a different, uh, what the purpose really is of our resolution, which is that uh, we feel that the budget cuts, not only to UW Oshkosh, but throughout the whole UW system, could have a great impact on upper education throughout the state of Wisconsin, but yet at the same time as a city council, you know, we want to be able to support our university, which is obviously in our whereas all the way through. And I would even, we don't normally read resolutions, but in this case, I think it really needs to be read because I'm not so sure it will get printed somewhere where a lot of our citizens will see to just really what we are um, supporting or not supporting in this resolution. So my, I guess I don't have verbiage for what the purpose would be, but, um, Maybe the purpose is is to you know, support UW Oshkosh. As simple as that. That's the purpose of this resolution: is that the budget cuts that are <coughs> proposed by the budget by the governor's office, and that could have drastic economic impact and and total impact on UW Oshkosh throughout the city of Oshkosh. So um, I, I'd like to move it forward. I think it's it is important because you know it'd be another two weeks, which would get a lot of information out there. I totally agree with that, but I think that uh, realistically, the resolution in and of itself states what we're really trying to do, which is support UW Oshkosh in the budget cuts that could affect um, the vitality of the university here in our community. Other comments? No, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll defer to play the, the opposite member. end of the spectrum from, from <laughs> Mr. Herman here. and. Uh, um, uh, you know, I, I, I think I think there's some some I, I mean the, the purpose of the resolution I, I primarily is is a is a message to our, our legislators of of, uh, of 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 our intent our hopes as uh, as community leaders here in Oshkosh but I think it's also a message to um, the university and the university employees and faculty uh, here in the community of our support for them as you indicated and I and I, I, I think in that regard there's you know it would be sensitive for us to listen to 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 what what they have to say in the, in the forums that they're going to be presenting, um, and I, I, I think a I, I think a resolution can be better crafted to address those specific concerns and those uh, specific uh, you know the specific issues that that local uh, faculty and staff have. So in that regard, I, I guess I was going to make a motion to to uh, lay this over um, as far as a date goes. I, I, Mr. Palmieri, did you do you know if there are if there are any Form of set in stone at this. I, I guess I, 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 I know this is this is at, at the state level. This is going to be a four month process at least. So I guess I, I would make a motion to lay this over until the April at, at first meeting in April, which would be April fourteenth. Fourteenth. Could I could I ask the gentleman? Is, is, well, is there a second? Well, well, is there a second? I, then we get on the floor and then we can then we'll ask. I, 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 Moving second. Okay. All right. I was going to ask the gentleman if he would hold off on his motion and let me ask a question. And then sure. go forward from there. So you can ask a question, then they, they can withdraw the motion in a second. All right. Why don't you ask the question? Mr. Palmieri, could you come to the front so people can hear you when I ask the question? <clears throat> uh, what it would would it be to if we were to strike the words to increase? Institu to increase in institutional flexibility for the UW systems to strike those words at this time would that meet the the um, the gist of your your concerns I think so uh, council still make this yeah, I think so councilman Peck because I everything you say in the resolution about the budget about the support for the system I think the council can confidently say 
that's based on data that we have and on public testimony we've had. But the flexibility part, we just don't know enough at this point. And I know for a fact that, that there are faculty that want to make sure we have forums on this to make sure that we know what flexibility means before we rah-rah support it. So that's why I would say either lay it over until we know what we're talking about with confidence or do like what other cities have done and just don't put that language in. It doesn't really hurt the resolution. Okay. Uh, other comments on waiving the rules or not waiving? Well, then we can come back to that. All right. See where we are. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I, I don't know procedurally if I, do I, I, just, I just can ask to withdraw the motion, or the, my motion. You can withdraw it and you would get consent from the second. Yes, that's fine. You want to withdraw it? I'll withdraw okay. it. Okay, no, we won't go forward with that, so we're back to the original. I'm making an assumption. That we're, we're back to the original. We're Don't back. assume anything. <laughs> <laughs> we're back to the original motion. Don't forget what we want to get, so yeah. everybody's not hurt. Uh, All right. Back to the original motion. Questions? Discussion on it? Well, well no. I guess I, I have a question. If, if we make uh, the changes in, in that part of the resolution, don't we want to make a change in the purpose, too? Because the purpose talks about support public authority status no we, no, we chat in the revised resolution it's different yeah that's what I pointed out yeah that's true it is but it, you, it still that, talks about if we were to go in that direction we would need to revise the purpose on there well because, it talks about flexibility, it talks about flexibility increased flexibility, flexibility. Too, so, so um, we take all the reference out to the flexibility okay so so what what I guess we would have to change wording in the purpose and then to mr. Peck's um, comments we would have to make changes on the, the second page of the resolution to that it says now therefore be resolved by the Common Council of the City of Oshkosh that the City of Oshkosh hereby supports the basic principles proposed by Governor Walker are we supporting that if we were going mean, we can see where people want to go yeah. with it. somebody can make a motion one way or another so. I mean the floor is open for discussion where part of the purpose talks about opposing the budget <coughs> cuts and then farther into the resolution <coughs> talks about supporting so uh, supports the basic principles so I I'm kind of confused too so I'm not sure go ahead I, actually the support for the basic principles I explain a little bit of the background on it there was lots of conversation going back and forth with the Chancellor then the the uh, <coughs> Uh, board of Regents, and this is where sometimes the faculty and the Board of Regents are go kind of going in different directions. That's one reason why I don't want to waive this. I want to move it forward and show support for the university because of economic development reasons as best we can. Otherwise, this thing can go on forever because I'm not sure the Board of Regents and each campus administration and the faculty are all going to be on the same path, and I don't want to get into to getting in the middle. So I want to show support for for supporting the institution, the institutions in general. So. Uh, with, with that being said, I think if we want to take out the flexibilities, it can be taken out in the title and the other. So, Mr. Okay. okay. Uh, I would like to amend the resolution before us. Under purpose, I would like to strike the words increased flexibilities. And in the now, for, now therefore be it resolved paragraph, I would like to strike beginning at the word two and then through the comma after schools. What's the beginning of the word to? Is that a motion? That is a motion. I, I just want to make sure that it, huh? Three paragraph. Okay, let me see. Supports the basic principles proposed by Governor Walker. So, so the, read the whole paragraph? Yes, so the, the paragraph would read, now therefore be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Oshkosh that the City of Oshkosh hereby supports the basic principles provo proposed by Governor Walker and the University of Wisconsin Board of Regents, opposes, budget, pr opposes proposed budget cuts to the UW system, and request the legislature fund the UW University <coughs> of Wisconsin system as recommended by the Board of Regents. Doesn't make sense. Second. Is there a second to that? Second. second. Discussion. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I have part of it was when we made the, the, the change. It, actually, we added in the uh, supports of the basic principles proposed by Governor Walker and the University Board of Regents to increase institutional flexibility. That whole thing was added in there 
I mean, another option if we didn't want to go with that would be just to take that part out and talk about supporting the University of Wisconsin Board of Regents and, uh, and we oppose proposed budget cuts. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I think that makes more sense. I think it's too chopped up here and it doesn't flow right because um, we're talking about like we're supporting one thing, but then we're opposing another thing. So it's it's kind of like if we're going to do that, it almost has to be two separate paragraphs because it, it first half of the paragraph talks about one thing, second half of the paragraph talks about another thing. Can you do it? And furthermore, opposes. It's something on that order. Always tough to craft it up here. I know we got. Yeah. A, I know we got a motion yeah. on the floor, but I'm trying to get to where we don't have 15 different motions. So. Well, it sounds as if UW Whitewater, which was the first one that Mr. Palmieri read, was pretty simple. So I mean, do you have a, a copy? Tony, can I get a copy of that? Well, ours would read like that, pretty much. So if we basically said now, be it therefore resolved, the Common Council City of Oshkosh, the City of Oshkosh opposes proposed budget cuts, and we take out all the. Support yep. part of it. See, you don't need I to. would support that. I, I, I think that I'm just, I'm that's just, more fluent, and it just because it, it seems like we're chopping it up. Thank you, sir. The, the, the other change is what the, the other stuff that was added was essentially <coughs> the stuff on economic development, so they didn't want to lead it. That was a real substance. Well, it just sounds like we're that. trying to recreate the wheel when we have something yep. no. like just simplistic no. there. When it, is that Mr. <laughs> Paul Mary? Going the way we were talking about, please. Do you have that? I, yeah. I haven't yeah. seen it, but. I have it, and when I look when I look at Whitewater's <laughs> resolution that was passed, it's one two paragraphs. Ours is two pages of verbosity. <laughs> um, so, with that said, I will. You go with your original motion or make changes. With that said, I will. Amend my amendment. Uh -huh. I just, can you, let me just ask you two to withdraw the the last one. He's going to propose it. They, I, yeah, with, we've withdrawn that. They one. already withdrew that. Okay, but you're, okay, go ahead, Mr. Pat. All right. Uh, I would say that uh, what we do is is that we have in the, the now therefore be it resolved. By the city, by the Common Council of the City of Oshkosh, that the City of Oshkosh, and this is, and from this point, and then begin the strike begins at hereby, and goes through to the point where I had originally struck. So schools it would be after the comma by schools so it would read that the city of well, no it, it, that part was already struck right. it goes okay. the part that's now being struck is to the board of region it follows regions so the entire from hereby through schools is struck so it would read the city of Oshkosh hereby opposes budget proposed pro budget cuts proposed budget cuts yeah. got it okay. and then let me just double check to make sure that the um, So then we have to, then I will go back to the purpose and that now we strike support, <laughs> so, but this is the point that, that the reason why I made the original amendment was that the idea behind this was to, actually you know what, I am going to, I withdraw the amendment to the amendment. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave it the way it is because the way I proposed it, it both comes forward with support for the UW system as well as opposing the budget cuts. It's clearly stated in the purpose of the resolution. So my amended amendment, that, that's there and it's back to the original amendment. Which means that, Which means that it will read it reads, now therefore be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Oshkosh that the City of Oshkosh hereby supports the basic principles supp proposed by Governor Walker. All right, wait a minute. All right, all right, all right, stop. <laughs> I have the floor, please. Now therefore be it resolved, this is how it will read. Now therefore be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Oshkosh that the City of Oshkosh supports the UW system schools 
opposes proposed budget cuts to the UW system and requests the legislature fund the University of Wisconsin system as recommended by the Board of Regents. Okay. We're clear on that? And then up front on the purpose, would that be like? It still stays support for UW system schools and opposed budget cuts to UW system. And we take out the words increase flexibility. All right. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, discussion on them. Mr. Pexa, amendment to the uh, resolution 15 119. Further comments? Seeing none, I'll ask clerk take the roll call vote uh, on the amendment to uh, resolution 15 119. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Hansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, now we're back to the original resolution as amended by Mr. Peck's uh, amendment uh, for consideration. Questions, discussions? Uh, just can we have the whole resolution read all out at the council meeting? Yes, if you'd like to read it, that would be your prerogative. That would be. Oh, I got a lot of scribbles on here now, but <laughs> Mr. Think, Peck can, can help I think you I can read it. Do you want, I can, I can, you want me to do it? I've got it. I got what I. I got yeah, what you want to read. All right. it. I, I just think it's an important piece. Like I said, I'm not uh, <clears throat> saying that the Northwestern won't print the total resolution or uh, any of the radio stations in the Oshkosh area, but I think it's important that again that um, this gets read publicly so that it's out there so that the citizens of Oshkosh, the professors, the teachers, all the sports staff, and citizens that support the university hear our total resolution that's going to be going to our local legislators and down to Madison. All right. Okay, Mr. Peck. Whereas UW Oshkosh is a resource for Oshkosh and the surrounding region improving our quality of life through education, fine and performing arts, athletics events, rich cultural events, civic engagement and outreach and whereas UW Oshkosh is a community catalyst taking a leadership role in critical projects such as the downtown Oshkosh revitalization, the renovation of the Best Western Premier Waterfront Hotel and Convention Center and the launch of collaborative regional economic development organization the Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation peren go EDC peren and whereas UW Oshkosh is a leader in the development of renewable energy sources that drive regional sustainability initiatives while having direct impact on quality of life as evidenced by a 2011 project to install a 1.4 megawatt biodigester at Rosendale Dairy in Pickett, Wisconsin and whereas a 2009 economic impact study noted UW Oshkosh exceeds one half billion dollars per year to the Wisconsin economy while supporting 9,000 Wisconsin jobs and generating $37.5 million in state tax revenue. And whereas UW Oshkosh is a large employer in Winnebago County with 670 faculty and instructional staff plus nearly 810 professional and support staff as well as an additional 178 limited term employees living in and supporting communities in Winnebago County and beyond. And whereas UW Oshkosh is a key driver of workforce development with over 90 percent of graduates remaining in our state after graduation and 36 percent of out-of-state students remaining in Wisconsin to live, work, and contribute to the economy and Whereas over 130 businesses and organizations hosted 427 co-op or intern students from the UW Oshkosh College of Business alone in the 2013-14 year, with many of these interns becoming valuable contributors to our economy as highly skilled, high-impact employees with regional companies and Whereas the governor's proposed biennial budget would reduce funding for the U University of Wisconsin system with a possible reduction for UW Oshkosh of $7.5 million, which would have an impact on UW Oshkosh's ability to be nimble and responsive to the needs of the regions. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Oshkosh that the City of Oshkosh hereby supports the <coughs> UW system schools opposes proposed budget cuts to the UW system and requests the legislature fund the University of Wisconsin system as recommended by the Board of Regents. 
be it further resolved by the Common Council of the City of Oshkosh that the City of Oshkosh hereby encourages the legislature to phase in any proposed cuts to the UW system to the extent that such budget cuts may be necessary to give the UW campuses the necessary time to implement meaningful changes that will not damage the university's ability to serve its students and the surrounding community. Be it further resolved that the appropriate city staff is hereby authorized and directed to forward a copy of this resolution to the city of Oshkosh's locally elected legislatures. Legislators. Yeah. Comments? Questions? I guess seeing none, I will ask clerk to take the roll call vote on amended 15 119. <coughs> Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. <coughs> Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, council discussion, direction of the city manager and future agenda items. The Go EDC branding kickoff meeting at the convention center, which will occur on Thursday at 7.30. People can go. I think it would be good to be there, find out more about it, and see what's, what's going to happen. Something that the, the council has been excited about and pushed for over the years. So I think it would be great if we could all be there. Uh, future agenda items. Somebody have something for future agenda items, or anybody have anything? Future agenda in particular? Um, I would just like to follow up on some conversations I've had with Mr. Roloff and Mr. Fitzpatrick uh, previously, and Ms. Brinkman. Could we get an update on kind of where we are with uh, the health insurance and looking at uh, self-funding or going in the market? I know that that was a an issue that was brought up by council in the past budget. I'd like to make sure that we are out ahead of that at this this year so uh, Mr. Roloff like I said you and I have chatted about this Mr. Fitz, Fitzpatrick and I have and uh, just get a, give us an update on this um, as you can. Oh, we can get that on the Very agenda. good. Good idea. We'll get on a future and agenda. If I could have a uh, off of that could we get a little update on how the wellness clinic is going and how many employees are, are going to the clinic and using it and any other information connected to it it's all kind of connected so. be happy to get you the numbers don't have them yet because it's, it's still early yeah but it's early we but. are exceeding initial uh numbers that we were we were really hoping for they're getting performance that they were hoping to get after six months and they've gotten it in a little over a month now so we're very pleased got to get feedback and uh very responsive to any issues or questions that come up um they're very responsive to get those things done but we don't have n actual numbers yet but that was the next thing we wanted to get for you so thank okay. you mr herman we'll get those anything else anybody okay notice sent to tilted skirt regarding inactive liquor license as of march 31 2014. Mr. Roll, would you like to comment on that it's just in accordance with our revised ordinance that we send a notice um this establishment uh, they're they're going to have their year up as of March 31. We've heard, you know, rumors through the grapevine that they're probably going to transfer that, but we haven't received an official request yet. So, in accordance with council direction, we're sending in their notice. Because actually, that's the new pizza ranch. That's the new pizza ranch, and they those restaurants typically don't have Correct. liquor served. So it's very likely that that the rumor we've heard on the street that <coughs> they're going to come in and request a transfer is likely going to come to pass. But Angie, I don't think you've gotten anything. I have not so far. But we're expecting it. But in accordance with it, if they don't, we're going to go through the process to uh, have them come up and explain what they're planning to do. Okay, I just want to throw one other thing in here, just real quick. Ask a question, folks. State of the city's coming up, which the city manager is going to talk about on Monday. Do you want to wear the blue shirts or not? Important questions. How do we dress? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Why not? Sure, wear the blue shirts. Just so, so we're consistent one way or the other. Yeah. Have them, we, might as well wear them. We okay with that? Okay. <laughs> mine's a dress. Huh? Mayor? I'll, I'll wear an appropriate blue shirt, but mine fits like a dress, so. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> well, it might be warm enough for a dress. Stick <laughs> in the dryer again. <laughs> Mayor, I have a... Yeah, Mr. Sure. It didn't get on the council agenda, but I just want to make a comment. I want to thank the Otter Street Fishing Club for their donation of the chainsaw for cutting ice holes. The Northwestern did a nice <laughs> job of a photograph. <laughs> And our local TV stations picked up on it. But I just want to thank the club and their their uh, members for that donation. It, again, it's important as we continue to move forward, City of Oshkosh, that the public-private partnerships that we have created and will be creating in the future helps the city in so many different ways. And this is just one. Uh, with the real warm weather, 
uh, this la this week and continuing. Uh, you know, that's an important piece of equipment. Hopefully, we won't use. People will heed the words of the uh, Don Herman and the Otter Street Club to stay off the ice now as it's deteriorating really fast. And if they haven't pulled the bridges today, they're going to be pulling them tomorrow, from the last I heard. So, just want to thank them again for their donation to the fire department for that chainsaw. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Anything else? One more time. Okay, citizen statements to council. Another opportunity for people to come forward with the microphone, which is open, to make any comments they would like to uh, about what may be going well, what's not going so well in the city. And if you come up, limit your comments to no more than five minutes. Give us your name and address. Speak directly to the council. Uh, don't speak to anything else that's on the agenda tonight. And no electioneering. I see no one coming forward. City manager announcements and statements. Preliminary fourth quarter financial statements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the fourth quarter, and they are preliminary fourth quarter statements, uh, but they're they're looking very positive in terms of where our, some of our revenues have been. But um, Ms. Larson always cautions me to, you know, don't get uh, too worked up. Let's get the numbers. Uh, we have to go through the audit, make sure things are appropriately charged to the different accounts. But it looks very good on both the expenditure and the revenue side. Uh, uh, we're comparing that to what we thought we were going to finish the year with when we gave you with the budget and it's a little better than we thought, so that's that's a positive thing. Um, happy to answer any questions uh, on a preliminary basis, of course. If not, uh, just a reminder, State of the City, we've already talked about it, uh, is going to be March 23rd at uh, 6 p.m. The uh, address starts at 6.30. City Exhibit Expo um, really starts at 6 o'clock. People start making the rounds, and it'll continue uh, after the presentation are going to be honoring a couple groups uh, not going to reveal those groups yet but we're very excited about the, the different partners we have uh, that are going to be recognized this year uh, appreciate some of the council members who gave me some ideas on that um, and then I uh, just want to mention there was an, a comment earlier in the meeting and I just wanted to follow up on it. it was during the discussion that we had about special assessments and the one gentleman talked about uh, you know, perhaps looking at different ways uh, of looking at special assessments. You recall that uh, late last year after Appleton had adopted their wheel tax, there was a question about, well, should we look into the wheel tax? Staff's first initiative towards this is we are doing the citizen survey through UW Oshkosh, and we always add a bonus question. Mr. Palmieri with a car a few years ago, dogs in parks was a burning issue, and we had it in there, and it Give, didn't give us a lot of direction, but it showed that the public was very divided on it. Um, we're adding a question about the wheel tax to get some input from the public so that the first thing we want to bring back to council is uh, somewhat scientifically valid numbers. Uh, hopefully the, the results will be a little telling because if you get them a little uh, blurred, it doesn't help you a whole lot. But uh, that's what we started with, and uh, it's following up on Mr. Herman's comments. So uh, that the results will be... Um, provided to us towards the end of April, so the new council will get that information um, to get started on their terms. So that's... Was, was uh, that was that, sur that, that survey is already prepared and being asked? That or? survey is already out. Yeah, uh, the people okay. who've gotten the mail <coughs> portion, which is the scientifically valid part, they've already gotten that, um, and I believe that deadline has passed. Uh, but you can still do the online survey. I believe it's still open. Uh, it might be open for the rest of this week. So if you want to do the online survey, please do. Uh, Professor Nolenberger notices that every once in a while you'll have a spurt of them and we're not saying people are entering five surveys at a time but that's why that's not part of the scientifically valid part. But actually the results from the online survey really mirror pretty close what the the results of the mail-in survey are so our experience has been. So if you want to provide your input, council members are welcome to provide the input as well as, as, well as anybody from the public who didn't get the mail-in survey. Yeah, just a quick comment. State of the city. To see Jeff back there, we were back there. Anything the city, uh, the newspaper could do if you could put in a kind word to get that on a, on the pages. We had some stuff on the election that would be wonderful. We want as many people as possible to turn out. Cause a lot of work goes into that by by city staff. While I'm mentioning you, I, I will mention that you will be leaving Oshkosh in terms of coverage. Uh, you've worked with us for a number of years, so we appreciate that. What you've done. And, we wish you good luck as you head to Green Bay, and hopefully you'll continue to to visit Oshkosh on a regular basis. Jeff, we'll miss you, and we'll also, but I think we'll miss Calvin more. 
Okay, uh, motion to go into closed session. I'll ask the Deputy Mayor for the motion, please. <coughs> motion to the Council may convene into closed session to discuss bargaining options, strategy, and parameters related to the negotiation of an agreement with the Grand Opera House Foundation for lease and operation of the Grand Opera House pursuant to Section 19.851E of the Wisconsin State Statutes where competitive bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Or second. Anybody like to speak to that from the council chamber? If not, bring it back to the council. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask uh, that the clerk take the roll call vote on the motion to go into closed session. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Let's try.